I regard myself as a cradle Anglican. I was born and baptized into the church at six months old. So I've known no other church. This is my church. I grew up in the Caribbean seeing reflections of myself in leadership within the church, within society as a whole. And then I came to England in 1979 as a teenager. And I looked around me and I couldn't see reflections of myself in leadership within the Church of England. It's hard to describe to someone who is used to being the majority culture what it's like walking into a church and feeling like you're the only one. It's just a very hard feeling to capture and I guess minorities from every ethnic group just learn to deal with that. If you don't see yourself, then you don't know that you are welcomed, that you can be part of. And so even though the church itself can be saying with words, you belong, you're welcome, everything about the situation communicates to you, I'm not part of this and I'm not welcome. Well, simiac has been around for almost 30 years. It'll be 30 years next year in 2016. And throughout that time, it's assisted uh, the Church of England um, with work around um, minority ethnic Anglican concerns. But the fact that we're still 30 years on and talking about the same things, I think that's the challenge for us, really. For people to feel that, that, that the church is for them, they want to be able to see that they are welcomed in, not just by words, but, but by actions. And actually, one of the ways that that happens is as people see leaders of similar skin colour, ethnicity to them, uh, in positions of leadership saying, come in, this is for you. Wherever there's a, a formal structure, um, whether there's a, a hierarchy, barriers will exist. Now they can be intentional or unintentional. I think the challenge is that we've got to try and recognise what those barriers are uh, and we need to do everything in our powers to remove them. I think it's okay to feel prejudiced or to have these thoughts but I think one needs to be prepared to confront it and talk about it and make the changes. And I remember in a rural deanery saying to them, what if you had a vacancy and I applied for it? Would you consider me? And this dear elderly church warden said, we have no black people here, so why would we want to uh, appoint you in a position like this? For I myself have struggled, actually, even though I have got lots of gifts that I can be used outside my church. It has taken a very long time for me to, to get involved. It wasn't that I didn't have the gift. I was just not the right colour, which is very hard to say, but that's true. We're all uniquely gifted by, by God. Um, and so if there are a group of people who aren't coming into the Church of England, that is to the de detriment of the whole, because God has made each individual special and unique and with particular gifts that are useful in the service of his kingdom. And so if there's a whole group of people who we're neglecting to reach, well, then we're in big trouble because God has gifted those people for a purpose and we want to we want to be part of the blessing that he wants to give to his people. When one gets across those kind of differences, there's so much that actually connects and there's so much richness which is being lost. My name is Shay Prince. Um, I got baptised and confirmed three years ago into the Church of England. It is important to have black people as a leader because it gives people more hope to like be like, OK, I, I want to be like this person. I can do this. A few years ago, I, I, I met a young man, 25 years old, the same ethnicity as me, and uh, he'd just become a Christian. So although he was welcomed in by me and others, it, in practice, he felt like this was a place that wasn't for him. Uh, he saw the, the lack of familiar faces, if you like, within the Church of England and thought that, that this wasn't a place that really welcomed him. And so he, he went elsewhere. So it seems to me that even at a clerical level, we're not getting the clergy who have black people in their churches encouraging them to offer themselves for ministry. The thing that most encouraged me to go into ministry were those people who came alongside me and said, you may not feel like this is for you, but let me encourage you. You, you have the gifts and the potential. And even though maybe you don't see people like yourself here, 
this could be you. And I think we need more of that, more people who would just get alongside uh, young people who are just at the process of beginning to think these things through. When I spoke um, in my maiden speech in July 2011, um, I said that we didn't ought to call it unfinished business, we ought to actually call it business barely started. And I think we've moved on from that point now. Uh, we're in a positive place, but the challenge really is for us to progress it. As a church, we cannot be telling those across the road in Parliament to do this and do the other if we don't get our own house in order. And so it's, it's a great challenge for the church. What I want to get across, I suppose, is that it's not about just being nice and welcoming. I think people are. But I think it's to go beyond that to actually in some it really taking make taking steps to include, to to nurture, to have opportunities for people from other backgrounds coming in. That starts just with the words that we use, but I think it, it has to go further than that. So that when I do walk into the church, I do see a leadership that, that, that begins to represent the wealth of diversity and gifts that we have uh, in this country. I think that gives a very good picture to the, the diverse world that we live in, that there is unity in Jesus Christ, which I think is an attractive thing for people, for young people. And one of the things said about the first Christians in the Acts of the Apostles was, see how they love one another. Now that love needs to be shown in action. And so for me, that the future of the Church of England looks like a church that says, we need to remain faithful to the scriptures, faithful to Christ, but how do we change for the sake of the kingdom of God? How do we include the people who aren't being included? so that the church that we build is like a city on the hill that, that people look at and think, this is what I want to be part of, and this is where I belong. <laughs>